no small favor when a nation admits them under tolerable conditions. As you know, your circumcised friend, meaning himself, may not even visit you in Zurich, where this uh, minister obviously lives, because of the laws of your own hometown. Thus, my co religionists owe much grateful appreciation to any government that shows that humanitarian consideration permits them without interference to worship the Almighty in the ways of their fathers. They enjoy a fair amount of freedom in the country in which I live, Germany or Berlin. Should they therefore attack their protectors on an issue of, of which men of virtue are particularly sensitive, or would it not be more fitting if they abstain from religious disputes with the dominant creed? I have read your translation of Bonnet's essay with close attention. After everything I have already said, I hope there can be no longer any doubt as to whether I found his arguments convincing. In addition, however, I must confess that I do not consider his reasoning even adequate as a defense of the Christian religion, as you seem to do. And then he finally goes on. Uh, but I have the impression that Mr. Bonnet's personal convictions and laudable zeal, that's the work the fellow translated, lead, led him to ascribe to his truth a cogency that no one else can see. Most of his conclusions do not follow from his premises, etc. What amazes me, however, is that you, sir, consider this study of sufficient caliber to convert a man, me, whose principles must be diametrically opposed to it. It's probably impossible for you to project yourself into the mind of someone for whom these views are not foregone conclusions, but who must first be persuaded of their validity. If you attempted to do this, yet still believe as you do that Socrates himself should have found Monsieur Bonnet's proofs irrefutable, it can only mean that one of us must be a remarkable example of the influence which prejudice and upbringing exert, even on those who search for the truth within their heart. And there's a little more. But that's, a, that's a tremendous response. That is Mendelssohn's response to Lavater. And the reason I read it to you before Jerusalem, I think it paints the character of the man, right? So you get a sense of that. Now what we'll do next time, we really will, we'll go through Jerusalem as fast as we can, and then we'll move on to see the effect in the future lectures and, and discussions of what Jerusalem produced in the Jewish community. Yeah. So can you, can you uh, give me some sort of reading indication of where Yeah, I think I can now, because I, I think we finally got into the meat. And uh, I think we'll get, I think as we go along this class, it gets, it'll get better. Uh, and uh, because the readings, to me are the key, and, 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 and they, I thought I had a, a syllabus here, and it seems to have evaporated. Did anyone grab one of my syllabuses out of my, yeah, thanks a lot, okay. Uh, so look here, um, yeah, so, so you know, you want to move along in this modern Jewish religious movements book. I don't know when we're going to get to all this stuff, but you want to read up to, as I was telling some of you, uh, Neo-Orthodoxy, page 270, but I don't know if we'll ever cover it all. But if you read it all, you'll be well, it'll be well worth your while. So all the way through to 270, but don't get into the American uh, thing, 270, war and on to America. We're not going to deal with anything like that. I don't think we'll deal with Hasidism too much, which is, um, my colleague can teach you that, uh, which is, uh, blah, 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 where does it start, Hasidism? 116 to about 155, but it doesn't hurt you to read it. So I think this book up to about page 270, but how soon? Oh, the next three or four weeks, then we'll have an exam after that or something. And uh, then here, in this book here, I guess I did have that thing from Solomon Maimon. Yeah, I did. Uh, I, I guess I did. Uh, it was in here before I got Well, we want to read. Um, Everything here, uh, the onset of change, new views of Western Europe, dome, emancipation of French Jewry, we just did co tortured Jewry, reform Judaism, Israel, Jacobson, Abraham Geiger, Wissenschaft of Judentum, the science of Judaism school, and then the uh, Protocols of the Elders of Zion, the anti-Semitic movements, Dreyfus, Jacques, up to Dreyfus, Jacques. Up to try for Jacques. What book is that? The Reading book. the source book. Up to try for Jacques. I mean, these are very. I'm going to cover them in class. These are very simple readings, but they're a lot of fun. You can even get a pretty good sense just by reading the introductions on what. Yeah. yeah. That's what I did, and then yeah. the rest of the reading. Yeah, I think it's great. I think it's great stuff. Don't have the actual documents because to read to read actually what Dreyfus said, you know, and also to read. Um, later on Herzl's reaction to it. And then um, you know, looking at the Semitic stuff and 
and uh, how reform Judaism. So we'll do the, you know, in, in looking at uh, Israel Jacobson and some of these others who come after Mendelssohn, we'll see how reform Judaism develops out of this and so on. But Rudowski is very good to show the conservative reaction and the, uh, the neo-Orthodox reaction. I'm not going to do too much of neo-Orthodox stuff, but you should do it. So you kept more time than me. You read it up to those pages that I told you. Yeah, do your work till the midterm or something. Is that the Jerusalem one? Thank you. you already read that, didn't you? No. no. <laughs> me, I, uh, let me see. Let me cut this off a little.